I'm, I'm just perplexed by the motivation. Basically just like, it's fun. Like I look at my calendar and we're hooking up with a couple of chicks that day. And I'm like, oh wow, what a great Wednesday. Man, there's just some podcasts most Christians avoid. Whether it's because of their content or extremely thirst trappy thumbnails. Some of these thumbnails are things that would cause most people to just completely abandon the internet. But one of the podcasts most notable and rising through the ranks in this specific niche is the Whatever Podcast. Now you may have seen what's been going on with Adam22 and his wife. If you haven't, very happy for you. Please don't Google it. But the Whatever Podcast just decided to have Adam22 and his wife on, and my friend Lila Rose was able to loop yours truly into the process. So I drove four hours to spend four hours on a dumpster fire of a podcast, and then drove four hours back, which leads many to my audience here asking, Ruslan, why would you appear on such a podcast? Some people may even be thinking that me appearing on a podcast like this could bring some of my audience over and potentially cause them to stumble. Some may even think that Christians even being involved in cultural hot topics like this is just not something we should be doing as if it's beneath us somehow. And listen, I'm gonna unpack all of that and give you guys my reasons with a specific Bible passage on why I decided to appear on this podcast. But first, let me give you some of the highlights from this conversation we had. I feel like the argument against people engaging in sort of non-traditional relationships is kind of weak if you have to instantly pivot into like, well, what about the kids? Yeah, I think uh, there's a design of how we were created to function in a one man, one woman covenantal arrangement. Now, I think everything outside of that is unhelpful. Mm -hmm. And I think there is something wrong with I think porn is a total net negative to society. I'm not sure how many of you guys is like fans that watch you regularly you've met in person uh, and, and how this affects them. But I mean, Andrew uh, Huberman did a whole long thing about what happens when someone consumes they open up a feedback loop that's intended to be consumed with someone else. So I think it's very hard to make the argument that is helping people as much as it's harming people. It's keeping a lot of these guys regressed. It's keeping, I mean, the incel community, the red pill stuff. A lot of the people that rail against you guys probably secretly go and watch this stuff, which is a mm -hmm. really bizarre thing we've seen it with the fresh and fit girls. So I, I don't know if as a net positive, this is something, remove the kids. Mm -hmm. Like this is something that you think is actually adding to human flourishing. But I, everyone tries to always focus on like the extreme watcher, but I think that there's like very healthy consumers which are probably the majority with consumption and like i don't think that like women consume porn too and i don't think they're sitting around all day just thinking to porn. i mean we both consume it at a very moderate level i don't know well, you guys create it so it's a bit different yeah. why we feel comfortable doing it again even after having been so massively in the news over the past couple of months you know adam you don't see mm -hmm. the increase in opening a relationship up to risk though. We're just giving you statistics, 90% of relationships. You guys are functionally in a non-monogamous relationship, even though privately you may not be. It seems like you guys have something special and it seems like you guys have a child and a beautiful family. You decided to get married. You decided to say the vows. And it seems like there's this roaring going on inside of you guys where you have certain values and you have certain things that you want for your kids in this unit, yet at the same time, I, I'm, I'm just perplexed by the motivation. Like, I don't see those things to be contradictory that we want to have a great life for our kids and stuff, and then we also are willing to you know, do I'm talking about for, your, for your own union. Like, like it seems like this increases the likelihood of this potentially ending, which I, I don't want for you I, guys. I don't, we've never really discussed it in those terms. I don't think of it that way. And I think if anything, it kind of, made our sex life a little bit more exciting for a period of time. Just the fact that I had a little bit of competition, a little bit more of a reason to go hard, you know? I don't necessarily think that's the worst thing. There's honestly. a freedom inside of a covenantal relationship to try things and to explore and to do things mm -hmm. that if you're out here and you're raw dogging and you don't know who has what and all the stipulations that go into that life, there's a freedom you have, there's a protection you have, there's a, there's a trust that you have in a, in a relationship where it's just you and the other person. And that's why I do think that the sexual revolution has overall been probably negative for most women because the truth is, is that as a man, you can have sex with any woman and you know, bust it in five, 10 minutes and you're good, you just had a good time. Whereas for a woman, realistically, the first time you have sex with a guy, you have like an infinitesimal percentage chance Chance that you're going to and you're realistically only going to end up having positive experiences by sleeping with the same guy over and over and really yeah. learning it's how to the connect with it's him. Called yeah. the it's called marriage. Totally. And, and I marriage. get that. I also just think women, you know, should be, should feel free to do what they want to do. But I also, in terms of what I would tell, you know, any woman in my life, what I would recommend for them, I would say, you know, hold your in high esteem. Porn aside, if my daughter was like, 
wanted to explore her like i don't think that's a bad thing like i don't think that's unethical but you, you just know? you guys just both acknowledge you wouldn't want your daughter to do that it wouldn't be it's my not ideal my first choice, thing. so isn't also, that a bit inconsistent though to create something that you wouldn't want your offspring like we want our kids to be better than us so why would you want them to do that like if they're well, aspiring for i you feel to, like what i'm doing allows my daughter to have a better life like I am able to, we're going to be able to like put her through private school because I have the life that I have now. Like I wouldn't have been able to give her that without that. My dad was a social worker and for sure he wanted me to be something bigger and better than a social worker. You know, it's yeah. like you always want your kid to do better than you would of want course. to do. You know, I would love if, if my daughter was, you know, some, some famed, uh, you know, artist or something that would be amazing. Do I necessarily think that that's in the cards? I mean, that's kind of. A roll of the dice. You never know what your kid's going to get. How into. much is it? How much is yeah. enough? Like financially? Like at what point does it just like? You, 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 I feel like you guys intrinsically know this isn't helpful. No, I think it's as long as you're having fun. Like yeah. whenever we go and but is there a dollar a day, amount? it's like no, it's not. A dollar it's, it's basically just like it's fun. Mm-hmm. Like I look at my calendar and we're hooking up with a couple of chicks that day, and I'm like, oh wow, what a great Wednesday. It's like yeah, very it's like profitable if it, and if it didn't fun. feel good anymore, like yeah. there are times. I mean, meth have, feels good. Like sometimes we have more sex on camera than we do off camera. And those weeks I don't feel like as connected to him. I'm like, wow, we've just been working so much. Like, I don't feel like we've been fostering a relationship. And in those weeks, if like we didn't take that break and that pause and talk about it and reconnect, then I could see myself being like, I don't want to do this anymore because it's interfering with our relationship. And it does feel good. But the downside of meth is much worse. You think there's any Having actually done it, it's not that great. Whereas the downside of having, you know, a three with some girl on camera is that at the end of the money you get a bunch of money in the mail so to me in, in the interim, yeah. different. There's a, there's a, you guys don't know potential consequences down the road I mean we've been doing it for a long time and I wouldn't really say that we've encountered many negative consequences from it just a but bunch of fun and cash and those weren't even the best moments in my opinion the best moment in this conversation I'm going to save till the end But first, I wanted to share what this reminded me of. Back in November, I had the amazing opportunity of going to Israel for the very first time. And I got to go to the Sea of Galilee where Jesus launches into his public ministry. I got to experience the layout of Israel and get a newfound respect of how far Jesus' hometown Nazareth is to the city of Galilee, a small port city where many of the disciples were actually fishermen. And it is here that Jesus encounters them and he's engaging with them and he's telling them that he's going to make them fishers of men. In Matthew 5, verse 13, Jesus tells the crowd, you are the salt of the earth, but what good is salt if it lost its flavor? Can you make it salty again? It will be thrown out and trampled underfoot as worthless. Having the opportunity to go to Israel and specifically Galilee, where a lot of these folks were fishermen, I got to understand the purpose of salt. And salt in this context did two things. One, it was before they had vehicles, Amazon Prime. So the salt was there to preserve the fish so that it wouldn't go rotten. And another purpose for salt was to also add flavor to the fish. So when we read this verse of Jesus telling his followers that they are the salt of the earth, it may lose some cultural meaning to us. But what he's really saying is that you are the type of people, disciples, who are here to preserve things and here to add flavor. And so if we don't go into these places and have these conversations and present the truth and add flavor and attempt to preserve goodness, who will? So driving up to the Whatever Podcast, I knew that that was my heart for everyone in that room. I know that this was going to be my mission, to be like Jesus, to present both grace and truth, to be the salt of the earth, to ultimately be a vessel, to plant seeds, and ultimately point people to Jesus. The people in the room, and to over 5,000 people that were watching live. And that is what led to what I think is this best moment. What Lila said was this beautiful picture of this acceptance in a marriage and also desiring to take care of yourself for your partner, to serve your partner, right? And I've been with my wife 15 years. We've both been overweight. I've been obese. She's had kids. We've been, we're we're in better shape now. We're lean. It's something that's a value of ours. My, My question would just simply be, it seems like, well, we've all tried all of these things. We've tried all of these ideologies and all these puzzles that we have to piece together. Have, have you guys ever genuinely considered like trying Jesus, repenting of your sin and really applying God's wisdom? Yeah, Adam. For your life. And I'm not, and, and I, that's not just- Not so much. I'm, I'm, I'm genuinely kidding. asking. 
you, you, you're Armenian. Our people have a beautiful, rich history. We're the first Armenian nation. We didn't have a written language until we translated the Bible into a written language. We have an amazing, rich, the most persecuted church, right? So, like, like genuinely, like, it seems like we've tried all these other things. We've tried doing it our own way. We're trying all this ideology. We're trying all these, where's the line? And, you know, have we genuinely ever looked at, at the scriptures and, and considered that maybe Jesus is who he says he is? Maybe he is God. Maybe he's not a liar. Maybe he's not a lunatic. Maybe he's not a good prophet. And genuinely repented of our ways and tried it God's way. I a thousand percent believe in God and Jesus and know all of that. That wasn't but what I asked. You're, but you don't understand my point of view. Like what would happen if the, all of society actually implemented the wisdom of God? Like genuine question. If people waited until marriage just to have Truthfully, I, I, uh, you're asking me about religion? Specifically about Jesus. About Jesus? H hedging your faith uh, on the Jesus resurrection loves of Jesus. Me. I know that. And Tr living your life his way. I'm a man of God. That's all I'm I can say. I'm a woman of God. I, I, yeah, I think I'll just leave it at that. Um, personally, you know, I've done quite a bit of research and digging and trying to convince myself that Jesus was a real person or that I should be invested in his teachings. Haven't really uh, been too convinced, so I'm still kind of waiting to be convinced that uh, this is something I should put my energy into. The vast majority of thinkers that I respect uh, or read or listen to are atheists. So for me personally, it's not really an issue. Like there's just not enough evidence to me that there's anything of value to offer from Christianity. It's like realistically, probably the best thing that you could do is like fall in love, get into a relationship with a girl, get married, mm -hmm. split your expenses, have a family, et cetera, once you feel comfortable financially. But like, you know, we, we mm -hmm. just live in a society where we're constantly surrounded by people who are putting on examples of doing the other thing, which mm -hmm. is basically like mindlessly chasing ass and, yep. you know, mm -hmm. highs and money or whatever for your whole life. And that is kind of like a weird thing that the manosphere has to sort of reckon with, which is that somebody like Andrew Tate being like at the forefront of the manosphere now, mm -hmm. it's like you can't really necessarily just be pushing an agenda of like, yo, f as many girls right. as possible because Andrew Tate is out here saying like, no, that is yeah. not going to make you happy yeah. in the long run. And anyone who's really being honest with you is going to let you know yeah. that's not going to make you happy in the long run. You, that was very profound. Mm -hmm. And I think what we're saying is, statistically speaking, the majority of men and women will have kids. Mm -hmm. What is the optimal way to build a family? Mm -hmm. If we're talking about dating, we're talking about relationships, what's the optimal way to cause the most amount of flourishing to the most amount of people? And what has worked mm -hmm. through and through, through all these civilizations? I think that's the crux of what we're getting on. So what you're saying is totally spot on. And it's not red pill, blue pill to me. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of goofy things from both sides, a lot of nonsense being pushed. But if we're talking about the optimal flourishing environments, because we're all gonna eventually have kids, majority of us anyway, mm -hmm. how does that look? Listen, I totally understand that these environments are not for everybody. But if you wanna see a time where I got to go onto Valuetainment and share the gospel with a different OnlyFans model, check this video out here.